died for our sins and that he rose again that we might have life eternal. That he took stripes for healing, thorns for peace. God, I thank you today. Thank you for being with us. In your precious and holy name.
correctly. It is stated by a man who was broken at the time of his life, and then he reverses what he said. Harvest Christian Center has a great tithing base. We know that. You guys are, are I look around the room, and, and almost everyone in here is givers to the church. Uh, let me make this clear, because I actually had someone ask me this this week. They said, well, why can't the church help every person that wants help? Well, because we only go by what is given. That's how we keep the lights on. That's how we have, have everything that we have. That's, that's how we have it is because of what you give. And someone said, well, the government pays the churches. No, no, we don't get a penny. Not, not a dime from them. It's all given. So we want to thank you for what you give. Uh, but I want to talk to you about this. Let me give you some statistics. Just so you know why we're talking about this this morning. I don't talk about it often. I may throw it in, but I don't preach on tithing very often. Or stewardship, if you will. But did you know out of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, three of the Gospels, that one out of every six verses on average discusses money? Three of the four Gospels, one out of every six verses discuss money or stewardship. <coughs> wonder why that is. Uh, we don't answer, we'll keep moving. Out of the 29 parables of Jesus, 16 of them deal with a person and money, over half. 16 of them deal with a person and money. More than 2,000 Bible verses deal with money and giving. So why do you think that the Bible talks so much about money? Because it's part of our daily lives. If you rode here in a car today, it took fuel to get in that car to get here. And the only way you got that fuel was throw it out of your neighbor's car or you purchased it. You paid for it, right? So it does take money for us to live. So why would God say that? Because everything we own has to be paid for by somebody. Now I understand that there are some that are on disability and that you draw a check and all those things. And I'm not putting you down in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But every dime that comes into your home, someone paid for. Someone somewhere paid for that dime to come into your doors. And so with that being said, if God knows that we literally have to have money to live on or that we need money to go on every day, why wouldn't he talk about it? The Bible knows that money can rule our lives if we're not careful. Solomon wrote the money was the answer to everything. Again, we know that's not an accurate statement, but it is an accurate statement in the context in which it was stated. But he did understand that people need money. Spurgeon said this, and I'm going to be brief this morning, but Spurgeon said this. I believe it was Spurgeon. He said, if God has your purse, he has your heart. If God has your purse, he has your heart. If he doesn't have your purse, he doesn't have the full extent of your heart. Um, this is a giving church. We're blessed. You are blessed. Mike Adams will discuss that shortly. But if God talked about money so much, we probably should talk about it occasionally. I know it's not popular, right? Say amen. amen. Uh, Malachi 3.10 is probably one of the most prominent verses on giving. But listen to what it says. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that shall not be room enough to receive it. God said, test me. Amen. God said, test me in this. It's the only place in scripture where God says, I dare you or test me. He says, test me in your giving. How many of you guys have ever done that? How many have ever tested God in giving? How many times has He put back more than two, three, four, five fold? Every person that raised their hand that said they've tested God in giving, it's literally come back beyond. We don't give for that because the Lord loves a cheerful giver, as Mr. Nichols said. But the reality is, here's what God told the children of Israel before He went silent for 400 years. He said, don't rob me, but I don't even think we're robbing God when we don't give. I think we're robbing ourselves when we don't give. Amen. Because what we're doing is tying the hands of God. He said, if you bring it into the storehouse, where is the storehouse? Back in that day, it was the temple. Now it's the church that you attend. Truthfully, that's where the tithe or the 10% goes. But he says, if you 
bring it in, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out to you. So uh, one example, I saw a guy who gave a child a gummy bear and he said, now hold it tight. Don't turn that gummy bear loose. And then he began to pour the bag of gummy bears over the kid's hand. And unless he turns loose of the one gummy bear, he's not going to get any more, right? Yeah. And think about it in this regard. If you have an ear of corn for you southern folk, ear of corn, or for you country folk, everybody knows what an ear of corn is, right? <laughs> if you take an ear of corn and you eat it, it's gone. But if you take that ear of corn and you bust it up into little pieces and you plant it, you've got a field full of corn. Because it has to be planted or sowed, if you will. Amen. Um, then he goes on to say, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Now think about that. God said, If you give me what is mine, I will bind up the devourer so he can't mess with what you got left. Verses in scripture like this. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. No one can serve two masters. You either serve one and hate the other. No man can love God and money. Do not love the things of this world, but things of heaven. Why money? Why talk about it? Most folks' mind is already made up. Let's be honest. If you're going to give, you're going to give. If you're one of those people that says, I can't afford to give, then you're not going to give. But if you're one of those people that have been financially strapped your whole life and you don't give, maybe it'd be worth testing God to see what He can do with what if you give Him His part first. Uh, just throwing that out there. But let's forget money for a minute. In the Old Testament, it gives some things that are to be forever. One of those is sowing and reaping. It says these will be throughout time, sowing and reaping. Now, I don't put money in as sowing, but let me throw it out there because we're not talking about money right now. He says it's always been and it always will be. So maybe giving is not about money, but about stewardship unto God. What if it's about losing your blessing or stealing your blessing from yourself? We talk about this in my house a lot. Not money, because we don't, we try not to bring that up unless we have to, right? We, if it doesn't fit in the budget, it doesn't fit. But, uh, but one of the things we talk about is counting calories. Okay? So if, you, if you're on like one of those fitness trackers, like on my phone, uh, I think Lori McKinnon put me on to Fitness Pal five years ago, and I don't even see you on there anymore, but I, I think I've got like six straight years of being on there without missing a day, right? And that's through gaining 70 pounds and losing 40 all the way, but uh, anyway, she put me on to that. Uh, but here's the thing about counting calories. You get two cups of mashed potatoes, and you go on there, and somebody says, two cups of mashed potatoes is 43 calories. Oh, well, that's what it is, right? I'm putting that in. Who are you lying to? You're not cheating anyone but yourself. You know, well, I just had four ounces of meat. Honey, you cooked a pound and it was just, you ate the whole thing. I mean, you can't. So what you're doing is cheating yourself. You ever play golf with those people? Hit one into the woods, a second one out of the woods, three dribblers down the fairway, then two onto the green, then three putts, and they go, that was a four. I made par. <laughs> You're not cheating. Can I get a witness back there? Hey, lift the other arm, man. When you just had surgery, I was not it. But you're not hurting anybody but yourself. You're not hurting anyone but yourself when you lie to yourself about things. So reality is, if I'm not giving God what's His, and if I'm not being a good steward with what's left, that's another one of those things. And let's just take it instead of food. Let's talk about, or instead of money, let's talk about food. I dreamed last night. I hate dreaming. I hate dreaming. I hate dreaming. Because I'm always wondering if it's a spiritual dream or not. This wasn't. It, it was bad pizza. I mean, I haven't eaten pizza. Right? But it was a bad pizza from a month ago. I don't know. But I dreamed that she stopped the song short after the first song. And I'm running from the back of the church with a whole pie in my hand. 
trying to figure out how to eat it before I get up here to do an announcement. And I'm thinking, if you're diabetic and you're eating a box of donuts and you're wondering why God won't deliver you, you're not being a good steward. You're not being a steward with what God's given you. Your time, your energy, your health, and all those things. So I begin to meditate on these things and I begin to, to see these things. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 came up. Whosoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And whosoever sows generously will reap generously. Amen. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. God said what you invest in is what will grow. Remember when you spent all your time watching TV and there were only three channels? Now there's 500 channels, right? What we invested in grow. Why are there 500 channels? Because people watch it. Right? What you invest in will grow. You know those folks that uh, can quote you every ball player from 1943 till now, their statistics and all that, and you ask them what John 3.16 says, who, who did he play for? What you invest in is what will grow. If you want to see your church blossom, if you want to see your community reached for a lost and dying world lost for Christ, invest in it. If you want to see your children come to Christ, invest. You know, if you tell your child all the time they're no account, they're never going to be any good, and then you wonder why they're no good, guess what? We reap what we sow. What about... Stewardship about time. God gave me 24 hours in a day. How much of that do I invest back into Him? Well, I just don't have time to study and read. And, well, then get up early. How much more will God give you if you invest in God? Time. What about worship? You ever just come in and not feel like worship? Just don't feel like worshiping? But if I'm a steward of what God's given me, He gave me the ability to get here this morning. He gave me air in my lungs. He gave me the ability to lift my arms. It's more than John can do with one arm, right? Uh, Jason, you just got past that, right? With that lifting of an arm. But God blessed us. I worship Him out of what He's already done for me. Loving people, what about that? And yes, even with money. I know people that give to the church and then they expect God to do the rest and they blow everything else. God's not going to honor that. You have to be a steward with what God's given you. How do you be a steward with what God's given you? If it's coming to money, let me say this clearly, and I will tell you, and, and Mark, you can vouch for this 100%. We can give people counsel sitting in my office, or he could do that when he was pastoring full time, and you can give them counsel, and they'll go out and do exactly what you say until things get better, then they stop doing it, and they're right back where they were. And they wonder why they got right back where they were. And it's the same with giving. People give to God the moment that they need something desperately, they give to God hoping he's going to dump something in the reward, but the moment, the moment that they don't need it as much, then they forget about it. And it's the same with stewardship with your finances. Why is it mentioned 2,000 times in Scripture? Because God knew that we were going to need to know about money. And there's things that the pastors so often don't talk about. I love my brother dearly. I hope he's watching. But he says, I won't preach on giving. I said, well, then you're robbing from the people. Because they need to know. They need to know. Some of you I know give online, and, and I was looking at Miss Lily, I'm going to tell on you. I can guarantee you a certain day of the month, my phone's going to buzz. I'm going to pick it up. It's going to be email from harvestchristiancenter.com, and it's going to say, Lily Ferris. She does it on a, it does it on its own, right? It just does it on its own. No, I do it. You do it? It, it, it seems like it just comes out faithfully the same time every month. And, and I, but we're blessed if we honestly honor God with what we have. If we sow abundantly, we'll reap abundantly. I don't like talking about these things. I really don't.
But I would say this to you if you're not a giver. And if you say these words, I can't afford to give, I would say to you, you can't afford not to give. Because you're stealing from your own pocket when you do that. You're stealing from your own pocket when you do that. If you're not a steward with what God has given you, uh, you ever heard the word overwhelming? Uh, have you ever looked at a task and it's overwhelming? I've been cleaning my garage. We took everything out of storage and piled in there and, and then there's a mica and, and there's all this stuff and, and we're moving stuff out of the room so we can strip the floors, the hardwood floors and refinish them and and I, and I walk in my garage for the last month and I'm like, nope, uh-uh. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. But then I went out there about four days ago and I said, I'm going to fix that corner. And I started in that corner. And after about three hours, I said, I'm done. This is overwhelming. But over the next few days, yesterday, I can pull a car in there and work on it. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? How are you going to become what God has called you to be? By being a steward of what God's given you. One part at a time. One little bit at a time. If it's your money that you're struggling with, and your our theme this year is my vision, then I'm going to find a way to give God his percentage, period. I'm going to find a way. I know that's not popular. I understand that, uh, and, and, and I know if you've got six car payments or two car payments and, and 12 house payments and, and you know, your, your payment out there on your, your uh, whatever here and there, and then you uh, go home and Google the telephone call from God. You may have heard that way back. The guy answers the phone, he says, hello, and he says, it's God. And he says, well, yeah, 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 Lord, I go to church. I mean, every, every well, 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 occasionally, yeah, I, uh -huh, I'll do better. Uh -huh. And then he gets down to the point where he says this, and I'll hush. He says, but, 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 but God, I can't give to the church because i got to pay for that new boat and motor. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, oh, you say if, if, if I don't start giving to the church, I'm not going to need that boat and motor anymore. <laughs> Oh. And when he hangs the phone up, he tells his wife, next time the phone rings, you're answering it. You need to have done a lot worse than I did, right? But all jokes aside, let me say this. If there's an area of your life you're struggling with, try sewing into whatever it is you're struggling with. If you can't manage time, start giving God a little more time. If, you're, if you've been broke since Moses walked the earth, start investing more in the kingdom of God. Amen. If it's your help, put the cookie down. Put the cigarette down. I know, right? I'm terrible. But if we don't become stewards of what God's given us, we'll never have everything God has for us. When money is no longer an issue for you, you can give it all to God. When it truly in your heart isn't an issue, God can give you more of it. But as long as it consumes a part of your heart, He can't give you more. Because it is your God. We have to be willing to let go of those things and let God be God in our lives. That is my spiel this morning. Uh, as of now, we're going to take in new members.